we were playing Kapolei and the way I got tackled, I fell on the ground head first and my head collided with the ground and they were just on top of me. We were doing a move we probably shouldn't have been doing and instead of rolling, I ended up head diving into the mat. That was the first time I technically got a concussion. I got my concussion from playing judo. I got thrown and I hit my head. In playing softball during a game against Castle, as I was running home, I had to get down and the girl stuck her arms out and I ended up getting clipped. It made me dizzy. I kind of laid there for a bit, kind of blacked out. Whenever I think it was just some throbbing headaches. Noise would irritate me. Constantly confused. Had a lot of headaches. It was more difficult for me to study. A lot of headaches. I was a little dizzy. Something was trying to burst out of my head. But wait, it doesn't have to get to that point. Three major points can help you prevent your concussions from getting worse and help you with recovering faster when dealing with the concussion. The first step is understanding the bigger risks you take by playing with a concussion or waiting to tell someone about it. Recognizing certain symptoms could allow you to do specific rehabilitation. Lastly, we will explain how recovering doesn't mean you have to just sit and watch from the sideline the whole time. Number one, the bigger risk. Continuing to play after a concussion not only poses the risk of suffering from another impact, but could also lead to a prolonged recovery. Athletes who did not report their concussion right away had two times longer recovery when compared to athletes who reported their concussion immediately. If a concussed athlete continues to play, it may take a lesser force of impact to cause a concussion. I tried to hide it because it was an important game to me and I worked really hard during practice and game time is when I can play. Didn't want that taken away from me. I didn't want to tell anybody because it was so close to postseason. So I didn't practice for a whole week and I missed the Eastern tournament. And they, then I practiced the next week, even though I was still kind of like woozy and dizzy and stuff. And certain things still bothered me, but we didn't really think much of it until the second time. And by then it was kind of just too late. I think people try to hide their concussions because it's not something to be proud about. Uh, most times we're ashamed of injuries and we want to just make our coaches proud. Some students like to try and hide it because they just want to play. They don't think long term. Um, it's more like um, how it's going to affect them. They don't think that it's, they just think that, oh, I, I have a concussion, I got my bell rung. They don't think that it's more in terms of like brain damage or um, more traumatic injury. I reported my concussion earlier and that also helped me uh, recover a lot quicker. If you're actually injured, the quicker you report it, the faster you can start healing. Number two, understanding your symptoms. Athletes who continue to have specific symptoms such as balance problems, dizziness, or neck pain will receive symptom-targeted rehabilitation to help speed up the recovery process. Many people have these symptoms but may be unsure if it's from a concussion. Please talk with your trainer for assistance. Being able to express and correctly recognize symptoms with your athletic trainer is very important. Like light sensitivity, like I couldn't walk around outside or even be in like a classroom with lights on without like sunglasses, like really dark sunglasses. The noise would irritate me like if like someone was talking really loudly next to me or even if there was like something like a jackhammer going on next to me, like construction work. I know there was construction work going on in the parking lot at one point and my head would just start like pounding with like this really painful like, like it, something was trying to burst out of my head and it was just really, really painful to the point where like I couldn't like, my eyes wouldn't be able to focus on things or like, I, like I would see like stars, like bright dots just appearing everywhere, stuff like that. Like 
I didn't look at the smart board for too long because that light gave me a really bad headache too. So I missed a lot of like notes and stuff because a lot of the teachers just use the smart board for notes because there's no other space to put the notes. And then... About 24 to 30 percent concussed students reported a decline in school performance and an effect on school attendance. But upon her return, I noticed that she seemed a little lethargic. Uh, required a little bit more time to process information and in regards to assignments may have needed a little bit more assistance with the instructions. About five years ago I had a student that was on the soccer team she was the goalie and she collided with another girl and she got a concussion and so when she returned back to the class, she, a lot of times she was lethargic, she complained of headaches, um, she would always want to put her head down, and she could only concentrate for a certain period of time, and she would have to take breaks in between lessons. Seventy-five percent of the students who are concussed reported headaches, fifty-four percent reported difficulty concentrating, 49% reported dizziness, and 46% reported that they felt slowed down. These are just a few of the most common symptoms, but if you feel like you have any of these, tell an adult right away. Number three, active recovery. Many athletes think that they're inactive one to two weeks after a concussion. A new study has shown that if you are active right after a concussion, it may lead to a speedy recovery time. Athletes, after one to two days of complete rest, are encouraged to be more athletic under the supervision of athletic trainers. So I had to go see a professional, Dr. King, at Kapiolani Hospital. She recommended that I do like physical therapy rehab. So I had to do a lot of like following the dot with my eyes so that my eyes could adjust to like lights. I had to do a lot of work on the stationary bike at first because I couldn't do anything super physical and that was enough like to get my heart rate up. And then I moved on to like jogging and walking. And then I had to work on my hand-eye coordination so I had to throw like bean bags and get them thrown at me. It didn't hurt if it hit me, but if it hit me, that means something's wrong. <laughs> Researchers have found that an increase in blood flow to the body and brain may be beneficial to recovery. I did something called RAP, which is Return to Activity Plan. It took about a week long. First day I had to do biking for 15 minutes. Then second day I had to do squats and stuff. And the third day I did a mile. It's important to remember these three points, so let's review. Waiting to tell someone about a concussion could lead to a prolonged recovery and could put you at a risk for a serious consequence. Tell an adult if you feel like you have a concussion or if you see a teammate with these symptoms. Reporting symptoms will allow you to do specific rehabilitation which will speed up the recovery process. Lastly, after a few days of rest, gradual monitored exercises can help speed up the recovery process. Ask your physician and or athletic trainer on how to do this. Dealing with a concussion is a lengthy process, but with these three points, the road to recovery will get you back on your feet and at your best. For more information, please go to www.hawaiiconcussion.com.